Our next keynote speaker is Vishaka Sharma. She is a principal data scientist at Roach. And she's here to tell, tell us about explainable deep learning for automated extraction from free text medical reports. Please welcome Vishaka Sharma. Uh, thank you for being here. My name is Vishaka uh, Sharma. I'm a principal data scientist at Roche. Today, I'll be presenting on the topic explainable uh, deep learning for automated extraction from free text medical reports to enable precision healthcare. Before I start my presentation, I have a disclaimer to read. Um, Roche has been uh, one of Johnson Labs customers since August 2018. Uh, this presentation has been prepared by Roche to provide a high level overview of Roche use of Johnson Labs uh, products. Nothing contained or uh, stated herein or during the presentation constitutes a uh, Roche endorsement of Johnson Labs products. Uh, Johnson Labs uh, is fully responsible uh, for accuracy and completeness of any statements uh, related to Johnson Labs uh, products, including the product's uh, performance. To tell you a little bit about Roche, um, it's a, a 120 years old company uh, with headquarters in Basel, uh, Switzerland. It has two main business uh, divisions, diagnostics and pharmaceuticals. Um, it is number one uh, in vitro. Uh, diagnostics and a leading provider of uh, cancer treatment uh, worldwide. Within diagnostics, um, we are a team uh, called um, Roche Information Solutions. Our primary focus is the Navify decision support uh, portfolio, uh, where we are currently mainly working in oncology. So Navify Tumor Board is a cloud-based uh, workflow uh, product that uh, securely integrates and displays relevant aggregated data into a single holistic patient dashboard for oncology care teams to review, align, and decide on optimal treatment for the patient. The clinical decision support apps uh, ecosystem is secured uh, fully integrated within our Navify Tumor Board. Uh, we have uh, three clinical decision support apps, Navify Guidelines, um, uh, which basically reviews up-to-date clinical uh, guidelines and record personalized uh, diagnostic and treatment paths using an intuitive decision trees. Um, the second one is uh, Navify Clinical Trial Match, uh, which easily search, and um, search the largest international trial registries, including clinicaltrials.gov, uh, European Medicines uh, Agency, uh, uh, Japan uh, Medical Association Center for Clinical Trials, etc. And third is the Navify Publication Search app effort, uh, that effortlessly uh, searches through uh, more than, um, I will say, 800,000 publications across PubMed, American Society of Clinical Oncology, European Society for Medical Oncology, and American Association of uh, Cancer Research. Uh, for a cancer patient, a large number of data points uh, get generated uh, along their journey. For example, genomics, uh, pathology, radiology, uh, their clinical data. The goal here is to navigate through the complexity of patient's journey and generate a longitudinal uh, view by unlocking these data sources. And for a more comprehensive view, unlocking unstructured um, data is very important because um, a lot of time uh, this has a diagnosis, uh, treatment information, and these data allow us to do uh, clinical decision support and population analytics. Uh, for this uh, talk, uh, I'm going to focus on unstructured data, which is present across uh, different sources. So one of the major challenges in healthcare is to consolidate this unstructured data, uh, like uh, genomic signatures, therapeutic information, um, uh, data fields which are present in pathology reports, like tumor size, uh, location of the tumor, what was the procedure performed uh, for that patient, uh, right? And this is uh, some of the sample reports, like genomic and surgical pathology reports. Um, and if we notice, right, uh, these uh, reports are... Uh, these reports very uh, are very diverse, right? Like some of them have jargons, tables, uh, key value pairs, and handwritten notes. In a lot of cases, when a sample report gets uh, reviewed by a pathologist, 
it looks like this right um i mean how many of you have seen something like this right so this is a handwritten text and if you read closely um you can see they are talking about tumor site tumor uh, staging icd codes and a bunch of other things um all of these annotations make the report extremely uh, valuable but the challenge is how do we extract all of this information so it is quite quite uh, clear um after looking at these um, reports that along with nlp we will need um ocr to efficiently extract information what is nlp uh, natural language processing is a field of uh, artificial intelligence that uh, basically helps computers um uh, understand interpret and manipulate um, human language um nlp draws from many formalisms um uh like uh, uh, dis uh like disciplines including computer science uh, compute and computational linguistics um in its pursuit to fill the gap between human com uh, communication and computer understanding um what is ocr uh, optical character recognition is the recognition of uh, printed or written text character by a computer uh, we need uh, nlp with high accuracy specialized for medical data uh with minimus uh, with minimize uh, time to train models and that can be extended for new content uh, types uh we need ocr with high accuracy and ability to retain document structure like tables list and paragraphs uh we had a bunch of requirements uh, from tools and services that could help us achieve uh, these uh, tasks or needs like scalability compliance low cost um ability to run on prem or in the cloud the success of nlp uh, approaches um, heavily depends on being able to understand the domain and as part uh, uh, as a first step we want to identify named entities uh, from the domain specific documents these entities are highly specific uh, to the use cases so healthcare data is extremely heterogeneous and complex and requires high quality labeling uh, data and domain expertise um and that can be very expensive and uh, time consuming uh, for any organization um at roche uh, we have extracted uh, more than 45 oncology entities uh, from pathology um uh, Uh, and radiology reports and here are a few examples um from surgical pathology report and a radiology report uh from patient that has been diagnosed with a lung cancer so uh, the highlighted text shows the entities of interest and um, its associated labels uh so the first example shows the diagnostic information of a lung patient uh like lung right upper lobe lesion wedge biopsy adenocarcinoma carcinoma moderately uh, differentiated where lung is the location and uh, right is the laterality um and wedge biopsy is the procedure and 2.5 cm is the size of the tumor and it says surgical margins are not involved and the second example shows the findings of a lung patient like uh, three rounded mass masses are noted in the right frontal and anterior parietal regions in the uh, in the parasagittal location near the convexity so in this sentence um, as we see uh, three masses are found for this patient and we label masses as mass uh, right is the laterality and uh, frontal and anterior parietal regions are the anatomy uh, labels so if you see this example uh you see mentions of types localization procedures and our approach has been as first step categorizing the content uh, broadly as possible and this helps us achieve high recall with entity extraction and we then in next step drill down into achieving high precision by mapping entities to uh, standard concepts so uh, before i discuss how we evaluated um, our ocr i want to um, uh, reiterate what is ocr um, so ocr stands for optical character recognition um, the technique is used to convert document images uh, to machine readable text right so uh, the goal for us here has been as you can imagine uh, to make sure we can um, consistently convert pdfs to text for pathology um genomics or radiology documents uh, to evaluate the performance of the ocr system uh, we used a combination of metrics 
uh, starting with character error, uh, which is nothing uh, but the minimum number of operations required to transform reference to output. Uh, then we evaluated um, based on the word error rate, uh, which is the number of words uh, substituted, uh, deleted, or inserted uh, from reference to output. Evaluating word error rate poses some uh, challenges like spacing and length of the word sequences. Uh, to overcome this, we use the back of words error rate, where instead of looking at words, uh, we look at bag of words. So each of these metrics uh, was measured against a bunch of OCR system parameters like if the document is a text or an image um, or the page segmentation mode which tells the system if the document has a single character or a block of text or tables etc. Uh, then uh, there is erosion and the scaling factor. Overall, based on uh, these metrics against our ground truth, uh, we landed uh, with a set of value of parameters uh, that performed well um, on our data. Um, uh, next, so NER um, is in simple words is uh, uh, entity extraction and is a subtask of um, information extraction uh, that seeks to locate and classify uh, named entity mentions in unstructured text um, into predefined categories uh, such as tumor site, primary tumor, etc. Um, and we uh, basically Spark NLP provides uh, both uh, CNN uh, by LSTM and BioBert implementations and we train a model to extract more than uh, 45 uh, labels from these pathology and radiology reports. Uh, so as we all know, like uh, CNN by LSTM is a novel neural network architecture uh, that automatically uh, detects a word and character level features using a hybrid bi-directional um, LSTM and CNN architecture um, eliminating the need for most feature engineering. Um, and that, that work has already been uh, published uh, by uh, Jason's uh, paper in 2015. Um, and BERT stands for bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. So unlike recent language representation uh, models, uh, BERT is designed uh, to pre-train deep learning uh, bidirectional representations uh, from unlabeled text uh, by jointly conditioning on both left and right context in all uh, layers. And the, the implementation of that um, is, has also been um, published in 2019 by Lee. Uh, BioBird is the first uh, domain-specific uh, BIRDS-based uh, model uh, pre-trained on biomedical domain corpora, uh, primarily PubMed abstracts and BMC full-text articles um, for 23 days on eight NVIDIA uh, V100 GPUs. Uh, and uh, that work has been published um, in 2019. So if we see, like, I think uh, we are leveraging these methods and we trained, uh, you know, uh, using uh, uh, these models, which are TensorFlow based, uh, TensorFlow models, um, to basically extract these uh, 45 labels from pathology and radiology reports uh, using Spark NLP. So I talked, uh, now that I have discussed, you know, um, basically um, about named entity recognition and optical character recognition, uh, with just uh, these approaches, uh, we cannot structure unstructured uh, text. So, um, so what is uh, entity resolution? Um, entity resolution means uh, removing duplicates, normalizing data, disambiguating records that correspond to real world entities across and within uh, data sets. So we have been looking into approaches um, which combine clinical embeddings and name entity uh, resolution to pick appropriate terminology concepts. Uh, similar to name entity recognition, entity uh, resolution models are, um, are per terminology ontologies like uh, uh, ICD-10, RxNorm, uh, SNOMED, etc. Uh, now that I have discussed uh, the techniques uh, used, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, the process. Like uh, what you see here on the slide is the complete workflow that we have uh, adapted. Um, on the left-hand side, 
um, I can show how the model is built and on the right hand side we see how the model is served and consumed. Um, there are many elements here for building the models in an automated manner. We stuck with the uh, with old fashioned Jenkins, which we use for orchestration. Um, another choice we made was to um, um, basically we, uh, we stick with uh, Jupyter for, you know, exploratory data analysis and even run, run it in the pipeline. Um, to parameterize uh, Jupyter, we use paper mill. Um, our NER OCR implementation is um, Spark NLP based. Uh, we use MLflow for um, tracking performance of each run along with recording artifacts. Uh, this gives us the ability to compare, pull, and deploy artifacts uh, from any run. Um, we deploy the latest model uh, that reaches the threshold performance as APIs, which then can be consumed by downstream um, application. Uh, this is our sandbox. Uh, getting to product is a little more manual since we are um, in a regulated environment. So you might wonder how much code it would uh, take to build a NER model and embeddings. Uh, it is basically uh, just a few lines uh, with Spark NLP and that has uh, helped keep things uh, simple for us, right? Um, and uh, this is a, a code snippet basically that shows what is how the initialization um, uh, code snippet is written, training the data resources, annotator, pipeline, and then running the training on top of it. Having said that, uh, uh, let me conclude on this, uh, on this section by uh, saying that um, NLP has been a journey for Roche. Uh, we will work towards expanding to more domains and automating information extraction as much as uh, possible. I uh, thank the audience. Um, uh, we are a team of engineers, data scientists, uh, product managers, and here is our contact information. Um, and Roche is hiring. Thank you.